Hello, Jacqueline, how are you? Hello, teacher, good evening. I'm doing great. What Hi. about you, teacher? How I'm you doing, doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you, Jacqueline. Nice to hear that. How was, what did you do today? And in the morning, I attend a, an English course, an English course to, it's like a training to get a job at Sykes. It is, uh, the program, is, uh, its name is Sykes Academy. And mm -hmm. I attended that program from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And after that, from 6 p.m. to 80 and 30 p.m., I attend my university class because I'm, I'm a student. That's excellent, Jacqueline. I'm very happy for you. It's good that you are going and you're, how long is the course? One is four weeks. Uh, and actually this course is three weeks. Uh, I mean, re regularly or typically last uh, four weeks. But when it lasts four weeks, it is because it starts from 7 a.m. to 12. But is this, uh, this is an intensive course, so that's the reason why it lasts only three weeks. Okay, okay. This, uh, this upcoming Monday, I will get my interview. That is uh, like a graduation process. And if I pass uh, this first interview, probably I'm going to get the job. I'm going to go to the trainee uh, on site. And after that, I will get the, uh, I don't know how to say that, the full contract or the job. I'm going to get the job. And when you are in Sex Academy, do you receive money or is only your time that you... Uh, uh, it depends. If I I succeed the graduation process, they are going to give me a bonus that is one hundred one hundred fifty dollars. But if I if I don't succeed the graduation process, they are they will not give me any any money or any bonus. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, good luck on Monday. But yes, it, because thank you with the bonus is enough for the transportation to for the first mm -hmm. for the first two weeks to go to work and buy food and then ah and then make money yeah salary yes yes now uh, nowadays i'm a little bit worried about my grammar because i need to succeed 85 percent and I recently made a test and I have 80%, so I need to succeed because I, they are going to evaluate four areas, grammar, organization of idea, fluency, and pronunciation. And at least three of them need to be up or at least 85%. And I got 85 in fluency and 85 in pronunciation. So I need to succeed 85 in grammar and organization of ideas. Okay, okay. Oof, a lot of stress, huh? Yes. Jacqueline, is that, going, is that going to be your first job? No, I I have worked um, since uh, eight, 19, 19 years old and I'm, I'm currently, I'm, I'm 24 years old, but I have worked um, for, at a bank. So this is going to be my first bilingual job. Uh, okay, okay. Well, I, I don't know, but I think that you make more is better salary at the bilingual job. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. The payment is better than a regular job. Okay. More difficult, I think, but but more money. So it's, it's okay because the more difficult the job, the more money you receive. Yes, and they tend to, to respect the schedules. And in a bank, uh, there is a time to close the bank, but the employees are still at the bank working. Mm -hmm. I work at a bank. I work in a bank that it closes at seven p.m. because the bank is at Metrocentro. 
so uh, we close the bank at 7 p.m. But we go out around 10 p.m. So and really? it was a hard schedule, yes. And we go and we uh, start the the day from 8 a.m. Sometimes 8 a.m. And they don't pay you those hours that you work to 10 p.m. No, they they there are no extra hours or bonus or nothing like that. They always said that says that they are going to give you a free day or extra free day or an early day, but this is not true because banks always are full and always there are a lot of things to do. So this yeah. is not possible to to give a a free day. Wow. Well, well, next week we find out if you get the job or not. So good luck. You keep practicing. Thank you so much. I well, really hope that. Yeah, it's good. It's a good opportunity. And Monica, how about you? How was your day? How are you? Good evening. Well, my day is uh, kind of tired because I, 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 what do you say? Um, descansar. I'm working off. I'm a weekly, oh, oh, working, weekly, working off. Um, I, I have to say, what do you say? Mandados in English. How do you say? Errands. Mm -hmm. uh, do you repeat please yes remember the question is how no what how uh -huh. do you say uh -huh. and then is errands errands correct thank you yeah. i have to to going to have a errands for the working off but it's, it's a, oh, thank you, errands. Thank you. Yeah. It's a very <laughs> exhausted, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I kind of uh, mix it for the uh, personal problems um, and other things, but I am here. <laughs> Thanks, God. Yes, yes. Sometimes a little difficult, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And Roxana, how about you? How was your day? Mm. Uh, it was great. A little tired. <laughs> I, you, did you work today, Roxana? No, but yes, because I work in my house. But in the, because I am a, a what is the housewife? Housewife? Yes, a housewife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. and, and I did many things in my house. Uh -huh. It's good to say housewife, yes. It's many activities to do in the house, really. It's yeah. When you are at home, you don't realize but when you are responsible for the house ah so many things to do washing cleaning cooking the, ooh, and if you have children more activities yes mm -hmm. but fortunately i don't have children <laughs> uh -huh. okay that's good let's work okay well guys i'm glad that everybody is here it, we're going to go ahead and get started, even if we only have a few people. But the idea is I'm going to explain a little bit first about uh, the unit, the midterm exam. Yesterday we finished unit three, if you remember. Let me go back to make sure. Sometimes we forget the last activity and it's important that we are clear, okay? So the last activity was this knowledge check. Remember, we tried with could you, 
could you ask or how to make these indirect requests? So after that, today, when you click next, here today or tomorrow, you can work on the midterm. The midterm is the exam of unit one, two, and three. And for this exam, there are six parts from letter A all the way to letter F. In letter A, it's a listening. The best way is first read the questions and the possible answers. You read the questions and the possible answers for the four options. Then after the four options, you go ahead and you listen, and then you check your, then you click on what you hear. Then you listen again and check the answers. So the technique is read the question, read the possible options, then listen and make a selection. After you make the selection, listen again and see if you are correct or not correct. This is part A, listening. Part B is easier because part B only you read and you select the correct word to complete the sentence. And it's only four sentences. So you read and choose the correct word. Letter C is here, this, all of these are to make a sentence, but this sentence is not in the correct order. Like the example, you need to take the words and put them in the correct order to make a sentence. This is for part C, only three sentences, only three, but it has to be correct. Remember, use capital letter, use period, check the punctuation to make sure you have the most points. Any questions for part A, B or C? No, okay. Not for the moment, teacher. Okay. Perfect. Now let's look at part D, E, and F. In part D is only if which is the correct. So you read and you select which form is the correct way to complete the sentence. This one is only three, only three questions. Part E, the same idea. You read and you look at all the options. Which one is the best option to complete the sentence for vocabulary? letter E. And the last one, letter F, is comprehension. You read the information and then you select here if it's true or false. It's possible more than one answer. For example, here, three statements are true. So according to the reading, after you read, which sentences are true? Okay. Okay, and that's our part for the exam. Any questions about the midterm? No, teacher. Okay. All right. And now, we're going to. There, okay. So now we're going to talk about a campfire and stories. Do you remember hearing the stories when you were little? Maybe your grandmother, your grandfather, or your parents told you stories. Do you remember any? Yes. Stories? Yes. Yes. For example, what stories do you remember? Uh, from my mother uh, and my grandmother, uh, a story for a. Uh, war in El Salvador, uh, okay. civil war in El Salvador. Um, um, yes, uh, the kind of Maori or the she uh, says or talking about or say or, or see or talking about about a uh, history for the El Salvador. Okay. It's very common to tell stories around a campfire. A campfire is like when you go to the beach or when you go to the mountains and you have a fire 
and everyone sits around the fire, maybe to have marshmallows, maybe to talk, maybe to drink. It's, this is the idea of the campfire, the place where you put the fire for maybe making hot dogs, for example. Okay, I kind of, uh, uh, I, tell, uh, I tell a story for uh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, oh. yes. But the campfire is the area. What we're going to see is we're going to see stories about the, around the campfire. The typical stories that people tell are scary stories, but this one is not scary. But here is our story. We're going to listen. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She I was like, oh, What's so interesting about this old campground? It is. Yo, remember, you need to maintain the microphone on mute because we hear all of the conversation in your house. <laughs> Elio, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, teacher. Okay, I'm going to put the microphone on mute because we hear the conversation in your house. Okay. Okay. All right. You want me to turn it? You want me oh. to turn it off or turn it? I, yes, yes, please. Please turn off the microphone for the moment. Thank you, Helio. Thank you. Okay. Let's listen again. Part and what is the campfire story? Teeth. When this woman came in with her daughter, she, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So, what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that, just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. Was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor dead ride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. 
no one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you, ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay, then. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers and they're in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that, thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted, Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted, Ted McShane. You have a good night. that are happening, the stories, a lot of things that they're talking about uh, that supposedly happen in the story, right? So tell me, what did you understand? What is the campfire story? About people when die in the house because uh, starting for the fire. Mm -hmm. Um, the next, I don't understand all. Okay, all right. Anybody else understand? Teacher, I, I have a question. Yes, Elena. What is the meaning of uh, spooky, spooky story? A uh, spooky story is a way to say scary story. Okay, okay. And for the, the story for it come is is uh, about to tell a spooky story when the people uh, came to camp and in this case the 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 girl with the red jacket uh, tell a spooky story to the friends and mm -hmm. to her friends and is uh, interesting because uh, she started uh, talking about for the owners of the of the uh, what do you say terreno the land the, the land and the the land is in the camp and the I understand the the owner the 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 male owner of the land uh, lost. Uh, his bride, and then uh, the 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 people say is the dead is uh, walking around in the forest, uh, searching at the bride. And in this moment, uh, this dead, the I, I think is the the same person that uh, is is appear to the ladies, something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. It has to do with, with the idea of the scary stories. The, the person that is Ted supposedly was in the original story that he was the husband, right? But his wife died. Yes. So, because his wife died, that's why Ted was, they say that he went crazy and then he started to do or walk around looking for his wife. Okay, good. Any other questions or any other parts? No. 
Okay, great. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to try to tell our story ourselves. I want you to think about a story that you know, for example, El Cipitio, La Ciguanaba, eh, La Carreta Chillona, any of those that you know, okay? From those stories, we want to tell it in English. That's it. All we want to do is tell the same story in English. Which stories do you know? Which stories do you remember? Maybe you remember not typical stories. Maybe you remember, ah, Cinderella or the American stories, right? Snow White or something like that. Teacher, I can tell you, tell you a, a spooky story, but it's not traditional story. It's okay? Yes, it's okay. I, I try. Okay. Um, with my husband and my girls, uh, I like it very much uh, before to the pandemic is uh, going to Cabañas El Pinavete in Chalatenango. And in, in this place, it's very interesting because it's, it's a fire in the night and give, give it a marshmallow mm -hmm. and put in the fire and eat. And one time, uh, other guests in the place, uh, conversation and have fun time, excellent. But with the pass of the time, um, Maybe three months after that, and that moment, um, I found it. Uh, I found uh, one of the guests in in this uh, place in the supermarket. <laughs> and she tell me in the where you say cabana. In the cabin. The cabin, yes, in the cabin, and they stay stay at that night is and the all and the other stream of the 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 place. In that night, they hear a scare because and is and the uh, next to the cabin is a a swing, and in the night the swim is moved. <laughs> And huh? then, yes, uh, listen and uh, a little girl cry and they go out to the cabin and no, nobody in the swim, but the swim is moving. Oh, it's very scary. And when, when I told my, my husband, my husband say, mm, maybe not come back to that place for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. In El Salvador, we have many traditional stories, right? And they, we have the idea for the typical stories, like we know, eh, La Ciguanaba, El Cipitio, La Carreta Chiona, la, El Jinete Sin Cabeza, or something. We have many different ones, right? And also, we have stories about a lot of witches in El Salvador. I think the witches were from... Eh, is it Ilo Basco? No. Isalco. Canton El Brujo and Yetu. Yes. When in aduanas we have a, a, a building in Angiatu in, in Canton El Brujo. And my partners tell us some history about uh, Susto. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> And that I can, I, that is a very, uh, oh, a lot of witches for the place. I'm, I'm from Sonsonate and I live in, not near Isalco, but it's like 15 minutes from my house to Isalco. And I got, I have a lot of friends here, there. And they told me that um, the cemetery 
It is, is that correct, cemetery? Yes. There, uh, there is a, a crib, or I don't know how to say, uh, tumba. A grave? A grave. Uh, and in, in that place uh, is a witcher. And I don't know, I, I, I don't remember the name, but people go to the grave and and bring him, bring him or drop off him something like a food, drinks, and I mean, beers or bottles of, of alcohol and food fruits and something like that and this is like a they ask him favors or something like that is something weird and strange that tradition there oh okay okay well that's what we, what we want to do is we want to practice our speaking so we're going to make partners and with our partners we want to tell a story that we remember don't worry, any story. It can be a traditional story, like, like I mentioned, El Cipitillo, La Ciguanaba, Careta Chiona, any traditional story, or it can be a story from another country. Maybe we have a typical story from other countries, right? They have the woolly locks with the, with the blonde hair and the wolves. Teacher, I can hear real. Okay. Yes, uh, Helio. Se escucha mucho ruido de ahí, de tu casa. O sea, I, uh -huh, solo si vas a hablar, encender el micrófono. Uh -huh. Thank you, Helio. Okay. So, that's what we're going to do with our partners. We're going to go, we're going to try to tell a story, we try to remember any story that we want, or a typical Salvadorian, or another one. We're going to, this is the opportunity to practice because when we return, we have to tell to the entire class. Okay. It's okay, the idea? Okay, teacher. Sí. Yes, teacher. I, yes, I understand. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So good. All right. So we want to make sure. Hang on. Let me see. I erased this one. Give me a second. Almost, we're just putting the time for it. Okay, so you have six minutes, so three minutes each partner to think, to ask, to look for vocabulary, to think about it, and then boom, we present in the group. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So, what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that, just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. 
friendly, sociable. Everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the field, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. Was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor dead ride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you, ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay, then. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers, and they're in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that. Thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore. Really? But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. <laughs> okay, Edwin. Did you see the story? Edwin? Hi, teacher. I just hey. come home. Did I just come the... home. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. I just coming in because I just come from, from go right now. Ah, okay, okay. The idea is... Sorry. No, no problem, no problem. The idea is from that spooky story, uh, we are creating, you are telling a story to the class. In this moment, the, your partners are practicing for example, they are telling the story, the Siguanaba, the Sipitillo, other traditional stories. You're going to be oh. okay? La Siguanaba, something like that. Yes, and any story. For example, maybe uh, we'll, we'll see you in this moment. For example, uh, Monica, would you like to begin? What story did you tell your partner? What story do you remember? Well, uh, Jose have a bad connection internet oh. but uh, mm -hmm. uh write about the lottery by shirley jackson mm -hmm. but at the time is a very short and i tried to searching about 
this um tell or mm -hmm. history or spooky history i don't know but i i don't i don't finish to um to find anything monica <laughs> excuse me you didn't find any any information about the the lottery. No, no, it's too long. Uh, the the history, the history, or okay. the the no, I don't know. He, the story, he, the story, uh, the story. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, no problem. Roxana, what about you? What story did you say? Sorry. Uh, what is what story my class my classmates said to me or or I said to her? What story you said to your classmate? Oh, but I don't like the tradition. I said to her that I don't like the traditional story. I like the stories on the Bible. Okay. Uh, Which the, story did you? Which and I said to her about the 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 David and Goliath the and, and how, how the, uh, David, David fought, fought, fought with Goliath and he, the lion. And he huh? what? David, David and Goliath. Yeah, but, Goliath. but the, when you say <laughs> proper names, you say, uh, well, David is in I Spanish, but in, in in, in, in English. Hebreo, in Hebreo, I don't know. Yeah. Hebrew. What is the origin mm. of the original name of the of the David and Goliath? Is? David. Right, David. Yeah, I understand this in, in English, but I remember that uh, uh, one of my teachers said to me, or, or I don't remember, that the name is proper. For example, my name is Roxana, but in English it's, it's Roxanne. But but if I if someone said to me Roxanne is not my name my name is Roxana. Correct. <laughs> but but I imagine one. if I imagine Richard. for for David is David in, in English but uh, yeah. but the original name of the of him I don't know because it's in 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 Hebrew or no I don't know. <laughs> Teacher, <laughs> it's yes, another Teacher pronunciation may. I imagine. <laughs> Teacher Maito. Yes, go ahead, Helio. Yes. So, yeah, I, 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 I want to corroborate something that Rosanna says, okay? But well, the, the, the issue is that biblical name, they are allowed to be translated. They are allowed. The only names that are, in, uh, are in allowed to be translated is the, is the proper name, like, like you say, he, she's Roxana. Okay, but she is going to be Roxana anywhere she goes. Anywhere she goes. Eh, no, no translation. No translation yeah. name. Not I understand in that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but uh, uh, what is uh, uh, allowed is they say the Bible, the Bible issues, they are allowed to be translated. That's why you, you, in English, you're going to find Mark, Luke, Mark, uh, John, yeah. Even in in, in funny we we have a uh, we have a uh, Lucas, uh, Matteo, which is Matthew, and, and so on. But the biblical names are allowed to be translated. Yes, because the Bible is translated in different uh, languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yes, I, I, know, I understand. I know, I, 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 <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, what, what, what the, I, issue is, the, yes. the, the, the issue the the issue is the proper names. That's the issue. Proper name, personal name, they are allowed to be translated. So yes, in English basic. But not, not, not for, for common people around the world. No. If if I if my name is Juan over here in El Salvador, I am Juan in the United States. I am Juan in, 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 in Canada. So I won't be young over there, no. My, my name is going to be Juan, wherever I go. 
Right, right. So my my what my I guess my question is what is the what is the story, Roxana? Yes. <laughs> okay. The story is that the David mm -hmm. fought with Goliath. Mm -hmm. And what is the pronunciation for Goliath in English? Goliath. 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 Yeah. And but God helped him, helped him to when he fa fought with fought. fought fought with Goliath and and he was a young man and Goliath is a big man and an was, adult was an David adult was, man David was a child yes and and uh, but he won't because God helped him he when he him. when he fought fought he, he with did, with he him defeated Goliath yeah, yes, and I and I it love it. this kind of story because it's I, it, I believe in I believe in God and I believe that that kind of stories is real, not me traditional too. stories, not real, but no, not real. I listen about that. But I like this kind of story on the Bible. There, there, they, they, they are lo lo Okay, lo all right, good, Roxanne. Who is your partner, Roxana? Oh, uh, Elena. Elena. Okay, Elena. And what story did you tell? Okay, I I tell her uh, the first moment I talk about uh, a story about the Carreta Chiona, but she tell me about it. Don't like it the traditional, and then I about an experience about my husband um, mm -hmm. in a, I told to her uh, in a Holy Week, my husband is a missionary in a, a little town. Um, in, 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 in this missionary is going to Paris and he going to um, an, a, a lady. Uh, in the first night, in the Wednesday at nine, uh, they, uh, went uh, they ate in the night ate and uh, the dinner and got to the sleep uh, but uh, when they uh, uh, each uh, each one in the bedroom they listened in the um, is a horse walk around the house but uh, the the pass uh, the the time pass the the horse is no walk, it's a, a run, it's very fast. And they felt weird in this moment um, because they saw through the windows and don't saw anything. <laughs> and in the lady is the priest give uh, to the lady, uh, where you say Ostia, a, a holy bread? No. Okay. What do you say, Ostia? I don't know. It's I'm. It's a religious uh, thing. Okay. It's uh, the Holy Spirit. Jose, Jose. You mean Jose? Yeah. You mean you mean Jose? Jose. Okay, Jose. And mm -hmm. they they meet in. Uh, they met in the center of the house, and they prayed. And then in this moment, uh, the horse is walk more fast, run more fast, but in, in this faster. moment, they faster, yes, and they, they, they uh, take care of the, the, the holy bread and they are plenty, the, the horse disappears. It's very interesting because they, uh, my husband say in the, the first moment, uh, they are afraid, but it's, uh, yeah, but this, and in a place you, they don't know, <laughs> with people don't know, and is but when it uh, stay together and pray, is a, yeah, a great right. peace inside of day. It's very interesting that experience. Uh, in my, I personally, I, I don't like to be a missionary because I, I don't want it 
anything. Yeah. <laughs> when you go to the missionary, the you missionary. eat yeah. everything the people give you because it's uh, the, the person give you the best they have. Um, it's something I don't like it, diet, the relleno de pescado, for example. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, but uh, my husband don't like it too, but <laughs> neither. But my husband is no wait and eat three relleno de pescado in these, in these days. <laughs> but is that is that a story? <laughs> Okay, all right. Very interesting. Okay, good. Edwin, what did you tell your partner? Well, uh, I really didn't say any story. He told me some, but uh, I can I can say something that I remember. My grandma used to tell used to tell me about about people who died in 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 very money. Well, when they were still alive, they buried money, and no, and no one knew, no one knew that he left buried money. That uh, some people walking on the forest could see a a a, a lead rolling ball, running the running running all the all, all the way toward the person, but if the person was knew what was what what happening he used to take the, the shirt and grab the, the the lit rolling ball and then take home after the way uh, in the morning the morning he went to see what was and it was a a a, a pot full of money it was it is by the story that my, my my grandma used to tell me you know, I, I really don't know if it was true, but uh, it was said that before people didn't didn't say the money in the bank, they they what they did was to to bury in their home and we were a place in the land. But uh, it's very no one from before Helio, right? Huh? It's common because the, before the the grandparents and the parents they don't believe in those things in the banks or having they have the money in the house yes sofa, yes, it under was, the bed it, in different yeah places. it was it, yeah it was it was, it, it, it was my my grandparents used to tell me you know but uh, it, it was very interesting because even even i i i have an an uncle that he didn't believe in, but it was in my own life he didn't believe in bank so what he did was to put his money on the on, on the mattress, and then the mattress in a little a little container, uh, and put that under under the mattress or bury it in the in the in the corner of the house. Is is what is what he he used to save his money. Okay. But uh, right. yeah, he didn't he didn't he didn't he didn't believe on, on bank. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's a story I, I remember. Okay, and Edwin, what about you? What story did you say? No, I didn't say nothing, teacher. <laughs> 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 okay, I, all right. I, I guess, but, I guess, but, uh, but maybe, uh, he, maybe he can make up one. <laughs> uh -huh. No, actually I like the story of the Bible too, you know. Um, the the story I is read more in the Bible is Jose, you know. It's a lie very much. Jose, you know. Tell me, Jose. Tell me the story Jose, of Jose. Yeah. Uh, Jose is, you know, he have when when she when she are a children, she dream. He, when he when when he are a children. When he they have, when he was, uh, he was a he had in a child or a boy. He he drinks, you know. He drinks. Um, and and the time pass, and when he was a uh, a uh, younger, like uh, twenty years, uh, the dream is come true, you know. 
the kind of true. So the and the brother, they they don't like him, you know. He, he say, how can how can how can you be a the us mayor than us? And I like that. No. And, and maybe you know, maybe the story about Roxana, I know he, oh, I like that, that story. And, you. And, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about, about Joseph, right? Yeah, Jose, you know, Jose, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> And he had like 20 something, he was the, the second one. And he he, no. he, he yeah, was Jacob. The second one. No. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting, you know, that story. And I like it. Okay. Uh, All right. Like... So you like the stories like Roxana, then, Edwin? The, the stories from the Bible? It's, it's interesting. The story yes. about it's really happy, you know. Mm -hmm. really happy. Very interesting. <laughs> okay, all right. And uh, Reina, uh, what story did you say? Good evening. Uh, uh, I remember my mother told told us that my brothers and me a uh, history from my grandpa. Uh, I remember she told us my grandpa, I was working very late in the night for home. And my grandpa is originally from, from Santa Ana, uh, San Julian. I don't remember the, the name of the canton. And he was working when a big dog, white, a big, white dog appeared in his way and he cannot pass. And then he turned off from the way from he came. And the next day, uh, he told, he hears about four people die. And then he says my mother in, in that history the white adejo saves his life. The cadejo, Hello. you say, Raymar? No. Yes, the, the, the white cadejo. He chose he was a, a very, very big dog, dog, very big white dog with his eyes red colors. I don't know. Okay. Good. That's it. Then. The idea is tell the story. Yes. You, you know, that, that's what they told you. Yes. That's what they believed before. Exactly. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me what about you? What which one did you have? Tell me. Which one did you have? Tell me. Okay, uh, I told to Jacqueline a story about a and one time uh, when she was uh, at her grandmother's house uh, with her family and, and they are um, in the room at night and everything was dark. Um, then she saw a uh, as I don't know how do you say silhouette? Silhouette. 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 Uh, and that's a fear um, like a grandfather, that her grandfather uh, who had died months ago. And and she saw that he entered to the room. She was very scared and when she turned on the light, uh, there was nothing in the bedroom. So it was very scared. Yes, many times people see different things 
right? Of, of the people that are dead or something like that, okay? So the idea for this part of the unit is we want to get in unit four two, we want to be able to tell stories in different times. We want to be able to tell stories in our past tense, in the present tense, in the past continuous, in the uh, simple present, different, uh, different grammar tense. So tomorrow we are going to go ahead and continue and we're going to see a little bit more of the topics, the grammar topics, so that we can tell stories in different forms. We can, tomorrow we're gonna to be looking at the past continuous and the difference between the past continuous and the simple past and try to use it. When do we use one or when do we use the other? Okay? All right. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. Have a, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate thank you, it. Thank you, teacher. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Yes, have a good rest. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 See you. Good night. Bye, Roxana. Good night. Bye. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Okay. okay, see you tomorrow, Roxana. Have a nice rest. <laughs> you do? No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <Yeah. laughs>